Coming up, the emergency team respond to a man that has amputated his hand. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for this to happen. A teenage boy has smashed his leg during a downhill mountain biking tournament. <laughs> and it's a race against time to save a man as he deals with a stroke that is paralysing his body. Uh, what we'd like to do is to get you to the hospital reasonably quickly. In code one. We saved nearly a quarter of an hour going to Auckland. Yeah. In Mission 1, the Whitianga-based rescue team are responding to a man who may have lost his entire hand. Have you got more update on what's wrong with the patient? It's an amputated hand. Hand yeah. through a planer, hand gone. Doesn't sound very nice. Uh, oh, so it's actually a bit more drastic than we thought. Yeah, yeah. I'll just go to comms, eh? Roger. Respect Rescue 1, course control. What's our ETA? Um, 10 minutes. Jonathan Anderson may have amputated his right hand while using a planing machine. Medical surgeons at Thames Hospital need him transferred immediately to Waikato Hospital where he can receive advanced treatment while there is still time. It's a 10 minute flight south of Whitianga to reach his location at Thames Hospital. We're currently flying from Whitianga uh, to Thames and uh, it sounds like there's a 30-year-old male there who's uh, put his hand through a planer and uh, he's lost most of his hand. It sounds like quite a nasty injury, so we're going to fly him through to uh, Waikato for plastic surgery, possibly. Right, the scent's good, and we'll come in now. Roger. Tail clear, right? Uh, he's clear. Tail clear. Right. Clear down? Yep, you clear out. Fair enough, of course. Intensive care paramedic Russell Clark and crewman Aaron Knight head directly into the hospital's emergency department to find the injured patient. Jonathan will need the wound dressed before transport, giving paramedic Russell Clark a first glance at the injury. Jonathan's injuries are serious. He has amputated all of his fingers and most of his right hand. Although a tourniquet has helped stop major blood loss from severed arteries, he's still at risk of bleeding out and requires urgent surgical intervention. During the transfer back to the helo, Jonathan sees his pregnant fiance for the first time and he can't hold back his emotions. But the team must keep moving, as Jonathan has a very small window of time left to maximise his chances of saving what is left of his hand. In Mission 2, the Mechanics Bay Rescue Team have just received an emergency call-out. Okay. 18-year-old Sam Eardley has fallen heavily off his mountain bike, causing an injury to his leg. Reports are still sketchy due to the remote location. 20 minutes flying time north of Auckland at the popular mountain biking tracks in Dome Valley. 19-year-old fellow's come off his bike and broken his leg. Not sure if it's lower or upper leg. If it is a femur, it's certainly a lot more serious. He's quite a few k's in the bush, the patient, and um, there is some sort of road access, so hopefully we can land and access them. If we can't, then there's a, a 
a small possibility we might need to do a winch to extract the guy out, but at this stage we're hoping we can land close by and um, sort him out. Okay, we're pretty much on the long they've given us. Project now. It's an ambulance, so two ambulances at the base there, so they've had to walk in a fair ways. Visual, yes. Come on round. Yeah. Cool. On the nose, visual. Okay, wonderful. All secure for landing. A firm. Okay, doors coming back. Roger. And tree on the uh, rear there, if you can sneak forward a bit. Okay. And don't come any further right. Nose right, tail left. Steady there, but that's good there. Right skids down. And yeah, all clear out. Air right. HEMS doctor Nick Longley and intensive care paramedic Marcel Dryson are met by an off-duty ambulance officer who gives them an immediate handover. He's, he's done his femur, he's fractured his femur. Yeah, right. Um, hit a tree, come off, bent over his hand, bike and fractured his femur. Jeez. Isolated injury, yeah. not, not KO'd. Yeah. Um, vital signs are all good. Right. He's got an old existing shoulder injury as well. Yep. Was that him screaming? Is he still in a bit yeah. of pain? Oh. Yeah, he's had tenamorphine and he's had a, a, some, had some methoxyfluorine. So what's his name? All right. Sam. 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 Hi, Sam. I'm Nick, one of the doctors. Just been hearing about you. You've broken your leg, probably. Oh. How's your pain at the moment? Bad. Give us a number, we like numbers. Okay, okay. maybe an eight. Okay, all right. Uh, so, <laughs> the morphine I've given you, has it helped? Not really. Uh, What's going to Sam has fractured the largest bone in his body, the left femur. A fracture of this magnitude still carries risk of internal infections and blood clotting. So, give him a bit of ketamine to help. Sam's major nerve systems affected by the damage bring on relentless phases of excruciating pain. Ah, ah. Thirty-year-old Jonathan has been prepared for an urgent airlift to Waikato Hospital after he suffered an horrific accident while at work. We're back. <laughs> He has amputated 90% of his entire right hand. The back of the area. Right, okay, right. One, two, three. After it was jammed in an industrial planer. He's uh, chopped off a bit of his hand, so uh, got him in the back of the machine. Uh, his hand's not bleeding that much at the moment, so it's good. And we got him some pain relief, which is making him feel pretty funny, but uh, distract him from his, from his hand injury. Doctors at Thames Hospital have managed to stem the bleeding for now as he makes yeah. his way to receive advanced treatment at Waikato's emergency department. You just need to tell me when it's sore, all right? Uh, it's sore now. All right, I'll give you some more medicine, all right? Winding up. Roger. One, two, three, four, secure the rear. Roger. Okay, come on up. Roger. Did you get that block at his hand, Russell? Yeah, he's, um, yeah, he's lost most of it. Oh, really? He's basically, if you draw a line from your wrist through to about the, the other side of the middle of your palm. Oh, gee, he's completely gone. It was, uh, it wasn't bleeding too badly, but they got a tourniquet in place, so... Holy! Yeah. During the flight to hospital, it's no surprise that Jonathan is very concerned about what the future may hold. I don't know what's going on. So we're taking to the hospital. Yeah. Right, you've hurt your hand, okay? Yeah, I've got no hand. You've lost a little bit of your hand, okay? Oh, okay. I'm not sure how much. Yeah. Oh, I saw it. Did you? Quite a lot. Okay, so Most of it's gone. Yeah. Is my partner okay? She's pregnant. I don't want to do She's fine. She's fine. She's fine. She's fine, John. You've seen her, right? She's got to meet us there, right? I just said, just getting my life back on track. He's had a rough year. Um, I think we've had a couple of family deaths and incidences, and his wife's um, pregnant as well, so now he's concerned that he can't care for his family. So he's quite aware that he's lost uh, most of his hand, as he did say he saw it. So he's just trying to get his head around everything that's going on, I think. Poor guy. So we're just giving you some ketamine. It's oh. going to chill you right out. At a remote mountain bike track north of Auckland, intensive care paramedic Marcel and HEMS doctor Nick are preparing 18-year-old Sam Eardley for transport to hospital after crashing his bike and breaking his femur in his left leg. 
If you experience any sort of weird stuff, it's just the drugs working, OK? Nothing else untoward going on. A fracture of this nature is incredibly painful. You all right? Yep, right. Ketamine is used for extreme cases of pain management, which put the patient in a trance-like state. You're doing all right there? I know. OK, you're doing really well, man. All right? Yeah. If it's a bit weird, it's just the ketamine no, working and you're doing really, really well. It's hard to get access to do where you're doing great. the block. Although the ketamine is working for now, the crew still have the complicated task of getting Sam off the Stokes basket and onto the aircraft stretcher, which means moving his damaged leg. Is this going to be easy or hard to get apart? Um, it should be reasonably easy. If we can get to that carabiner there, carabiner. which it looks like we can. So we have an attempt at that, and then if it, we'll see how it tolerates it. Then we pull out. So this is... Yeah. Oh. I think we're going to have to slug him with a bit more ketamine, eh? Now, okay. yeah, give us two seconds, we'll give him a bit more of a... Okay. Tolerating it well, so... Oh. Over here. We'll just give him a second oh, yeah. to work for that work. Sam, I want you to just think about deep breathing, slow breathing. We're just going to feel a bit of pulling from the top of you. Oh, let's just do that slowly and no, see how he's tolerating. Not much, eh? No. Good. Good. Sam's um, injured. He's come off his uh, mountain bike. He's fractured his femur, the largest bone in the body, quite high up on the left side there. It's very appropriate to call the chopper because of the isolation of the place and trying to get out in the bumpy roads. So, yeah, he's, he's doing all right. He's uh, status three at this stage and all going well. We'll be at North Shore shortly. In mission three, the Auckland-based Hilo was responding to a status one call out. Peace and peace are all in the green then. Instruments on set. All set secure. OK, 50. 47-year-old Sam Jordan is in a critical condition after suffering a stroke. He's lost feeling in the left side of his body and he's at risk of further deterioration without immediate treatment in hospital. The team have a 15-minute flight east to reach the seaside township of Coromandel. If a stroke victim receives medical attention within three hours, it can significantly reduce the long-term disabilities. This is a guy that may be thrombolizable if we can get him to hospital in time. Yep. Um, how are we faced with flying to Waikato versus coming back here? Um, well, Auckland's closer. Right. Oh, there's Fiery there. They're sitting up in the car park. Clear, Rachel. Clear, all. I'm not going to get out. I can just sit in the doorway. Yep. No overall obstruction. You're clear to descend. Right, I'm coming down. Good position. Tail's clear. Right, I'm coming down. Stay your discretion. Clear, all, guys. Roger. Emergency HEMS doctor Gareth Richards and intensive care paramedic Bruce Kerr work their way through a maze of housing to reach the stroke patient. Morning. Young Samuel Jordan, 47, <laughs> sit and start at uh, 8.30 this morning, left leg, yep. left arm weakness, slurring, speech. No. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do is, what we're thinking is we're worried about uh, is there some blockage to one of the blood supplies to the part of the brain that controls your um, your movement? Yep. Uh, what we'd like to do is to get you to the hospital reasonably quickly, and there's a possibility that if there is a blockage, talk about some medication to try and unblock that. He has what looks like a stroke, either some sort of interruption to the blood supply to the brain, and it's made his, his left side weak. So it's fairly important to get him to the hospital as soon as we can so that it, um, he can recover from it. Sam Eardley is ready to be transported to North Shore Hospital. He has fractured the femur in his left leg after crashing his mountain bike at high speed. Yeah, just updating. We've met up with the crew. We're just um, getting the patient extricated and um, we'll probably be here another 15, 20 and then we'll call you when we go to North Shore. Coming, thank you. There we go. 
Yeah. Right. You can stay. One, two, three. Wonderful. Oh, wheels are on. You have control. What's the plan? Probably need to back up. I reckon I just lift. I'll see how bumpy it feels as I, as I lift up. Okay. Everybody, all good? Yep. yep. And we we'll fly away there. All right. Let's do a bunch of vitals. Fifteen GCS. Fourteen. Yep. yep. Fifteen. Heart rate. 79. Respirate. About 10, 10 to 12. Sets. 96. Oh, good. Sam's stats are fine for now. He's still at risk of blood clots and internal infection that could have long-term effects. In the Coromandel, Hems doctor Gareth Richards and intensive care paramedic Bruce Kerr are facing a time critical emergency. Up, up. One, two, two, three. <laughs> Falling over the side. Can I get you? Yep. So your job just to support him? Yep, yep. yep. Sam has suffered a stroke that has affected the entire left side of his body. He needs immediate medical intervention before the blood clots paralyze his whole body. Bruce. We saved nearly a quarter of an hour going to Auckland. Yeah, yeah. Should we go to Auckland? If you think it's worth it, yeah. 8.30? I mean, he's, yeah, I'm 20 sure. minutes to Auckland, 35 or something yeah. to Waikato. Oh I'll, I'll, right, I'll, I'll let Com yeah. throw. Thank you. Yeah. Auckland, please. How are you guys on the back? Yep, we're all good. Secure. secure. All right, let's see. The signs he's presented with are uh, weakness down the left side of his body. What we're concerned about in transport is whether that stroke progresses to affect his conscious state, affect his breathing, whether we need to take over and support his breathing while we're flying, which would add to the degree of severity of illness for him. So this is a time critical presentation. We know that if we can get someone to the hospital within a short period of time and give them medication to break down that clot, then that can improve their recovery from the, the stroke itself. Only time will determine Sam's outcome. Jonathan Anderson is now en route to Waikato Hospital after he amputated his hand with an industrial planer while at work. My partner's pregnant and I don't want to lose the child, I don't want to stretch her out. We've had a hell of a... Yeah, I know, I know you've had a rough time. Hey, look, we've already spoke to your wife, OK? She understands, OK? She's going to be all right. She's going to be all right. Jonathan's doing quite well at the moment, just trying to stay on top of his pain with a mixture of... Um, Analgesia, so we're just trying to mix the combined effects of that to take his mind off what's actually happened to him today. Um, he's a little bit upset when he uh, he does realise what's happened, and he's a bit concerned about um, you know, the future in bits and pieces, which is understandable given that he's um, sustained quite a serious injury. I mean, the good news is um, he, he will he will recover from this, but he will have to have ongoing treatment, occupational therapy, and um, basically he'll, he'll have this disability for the rest of his life now. Pads all clear. Coming land. I'll commit now. During the descent, Jonathan's wound begins to bleed heavily. Oh, it's starting to leak a bit too. Do you need a hot offload or you have to shut down? Uh, no, we'll get a hot offload. It's just starting to bleed. Prompting Russell to call for a quick transfer. I just probably need to get a combine and I'll just pop all this paper. I've got a towel on his feet. No orders, so. You're not going to die, mate. Oh, awesome. I'll look after you. Pete. Aaron, you'll manage the hot offload. A yeah. Clear yeah. Yep. Click the block on. The team's number one priority now is to get Jonathan into the ED so plastic surgeons can assess the full extent of his injuries and begin the process of saving what they can. Put it down a bit. That's right. You got it? Yeah. Six months on. Jonathan spent two months in hospital undergoing multiple surgical procedures to repair his severed hand. He has since returned home with his fiance, where they recall the day that changed his life forever. By about 6.30 is when, when the accident happened. I got a jam up on the whining machine that I was running. 
So I uh, went into the processing plant itself and was starting to adjust the machine and unfortunately lost my hand in the process. Jonathan now has recovered from his accident after countless surgeries and rehabilitation, but he's still getting used to his new life without a hand. It changes your life forever, and our lives will, will never be the same, will they? It's, you know, we, had a, we have a dream, and we had a dream before, you know, white picket fence, all that. It's just changed a little bit, and that's the way we look at it. And the big driving force for Jonathan is his family and his unborn son. You know, I just kept reminding him, just, you're going to be a dad. Just stay in there. I think that was the main thing that helped pull him through, was knowing he had to come through for both of us. Uh, yeah. It's family. Because family Love. is important to him. Yeah. So, um, it's the only thing that's important. Nothing else matters. Now Jonathan and Wendy have a lot to look forward to with a great positive outlook on life and the future. Our future's it's not set in stone in any way or means. Apart from that we're engaged, we're having our first child, um, and yeah, we're one day gonna own our own home, fingers crossed. It's a bit of a pun, I guess. <laughs> um, but, well, yeah, um, just grateful. Just, it's an honour to be able to receive the help that I got. Anybody will bend over backwards to help somebody, and the Westpac helicopter, I owe them my life. Sam spent two weeks in hospital after receiving surgery to his fractured femur. He's looking forward to getting back on the bike. After spending two months in hospital, Sam Jordan still requires daily rehab and has a long road to recovery. And Jonathan will always remember the ones that came to his aid. It's just such a privilege to be here because of how fast the response team were. I can't thank them enough, and I hope one day I do get the chance to thank them.